Hey guys, welcome back. General Purpose TV. It's my YouTube channel where I do all sorts of projects out of my garage here. Sometimes I work on my cars. Lately, I've been working on building this acoustic guitar based on the plans you see back here. In this particular episode, I'll be gluing the bracing onto the back and then taking the back and gluing it onto the guitar body. If this is something you're interested in, I suggest you stick around. But enough of this talk, let's go get started. All right, so first order of business is uh, I need to cut out the shape of the side. So this is uh, something I traced earlier. And I'm just going to rough cut it, even about a quarter inch. Uh, I'm going to cut about a quarter inch away from the bottom. And uh, you know, that, that just leaves me a little bit of room to see what goes wrong. Sometimes you get a little tear out or get uh, some chipping or whatnot, so I'm just going to side. It's certainly uh, starting to take uh, shape here, which is nice to see. Once I have the back here uh, cut out to its basic shape, <clears throat> I want to trim, I want to trace out rather, where, uh, where the neck and heel block are going to go. And that'll allow me to lay it out uh, a little more accurately. I want to know exactly where the neck block and the heel block line up on the back so I clamp it into my mold here and I just trace the inside uh, of the sides here I trace that all the way around and I pay particular attention to the neck and the heel block and I trace around that and that way I know my center bracing exactly where it starts and ends so after I have that traced uh, I grab my plans and that's where I'm going to take my measurements from uh, and what I'll do is I'll use my radius dish uh, to sand the braces to the correct radius the first thing though I want to do is transfer my braces the measurements for each brace is transfer them right from the plans onto the back and uh, the plans are a one-to-one -one ratio, so I can just uh, measure down from the neck block to the first brace, then for the first brace down to the second brace, and so on and so forth until everything is laid out perfectly. And once I transfer all those measurements to the back, I'll just take a, uh, a little square and draw reference lines so that I can line up each brace like I'm doing here on the back. Alright, so after my measurements are transferred over, I'm going to take the bra each brace and I'm going to just sand them uh, to the correct radius using my radius dish. And I make sure to place each brace uh, approximately where it's going to uh, rest there on the back. That way I have the perfect radius there. Uh, I don't want to take the top brace and sand it on the middle of the radius board for obvious reasons. The radius won't be correct. So what I'll do is I'll put pencil marks on the back of the brace like you see here and then I'll sand them off and once they're, all the pencil marks are gone then I'll know that uh, it is sanded to the correct radius. Then I'll just uh, line them up here on the back. I make sure I'm doing this all on the radius dish and I cut little pieces of uh, little strips of mahogany there and I'll double stick tape them. Uh, in you know along the lines that I've drawn out and that'll just keep the braces from moving around it keeps them locked into position there so that when I go to do the glue up uh, they're not going to be moving around on me or anything like, anything like that so I, I put about four braces three or four braces per uh, three or four little blocks rather per brace to keep everything lined up perfectly there 
Uh, and once that's all done, then I get uh, my Go Bar deck, which you see here is just a crude little Go Bar deck that I just screwed out of some scrap wood, uh, screwed it all together. Spread a little glue onto each brace, and I use little um, pine dowels you see here to, uh, to to clamp down each brace. Not real satisfied here with the pine dowels. Uh, after about one glue up, they basically stay kind of radius and they, they keep a bend in them. They're so dry. Sometimes they'll crack on you too. Uh, so I think when I go to do the top, I'm going to uh, get something else to use. But I'm also scraping out all the glue up here. It's very important to do. I just use a six inch rule and I scrape out all any, any squeeze out of the glue. Uh, get that all cleaned up. Uh, better to do it now than when everything's done. It's a lot less sanding and scraping to do. Uh, but I'll start in the middle and work my way to the outside just because it's a little more convenient. I uh, use about three brace, uh, three um, dowels there per brace. And uh, just again making sure I scrape out all the glue that uh, squeezes out. You actually notice uh, as you start uh, gluing down other braces, uh, you'll get more squeeze out on the uh, braces that you previously glued up uh, I guess as everything starts to conform really tightly to the radius dish that'll happen There's everything glued up. Let it sit for about two hours, two to three hours, and then I start just taking out these uh, dowels uh, one by one. You can see they keep their bent shape to them. That's why they're not really that great. And once I get all them out, then I start laying up these center braces. I have uh, little pieces of Sitka spruce that I cut the size, carefully measuring to my pencil marks. And I use basically the same process with the go bar deck to clamp them down. Again, I'm getting rid of the glue squeeze out there um, making sure that they don't they haven't moved from my original layout lines and I just work my way down uh, one one brace at a time make sure it's a real tight fit and I got really good clamping pressure here on my go bar deck So I let that dry just the same, about two to three hours, uh, you know, depending on the temperature, obviously. But take these uh, pegs out, and then we're basically done here with the go bar deck. And I just leave it on the radius dish. And at this point, I'm going to be just doing some cleanup with some sandpaper. Uh, and uh, here I'm sharpening up my chisel because. 
uh, we're going to form the braces a little bit. They come, you know, somewhat preformed, but I like to uh, trim them down the way I like them and get them uh, towards the edges of the back where the, it's going to meet up with the sides. I, I chisel them down to a, you know, really thin, a sixteenth of an inch, uh, maybe even a thirty-second of an inch, and it, it's takes some time and you kind of just uh, you want it to look nice as well as take off as much material as you can to lighten everything up and, and but as, keep your bracing as stiff as possible at the same time and it takes a lot of practice but you work your way through with with every brace there um, you know getting everything shaped to a nice scalp there uh, on every single brace. All right, so once uh, all the braces are carved up, uh, I clamp it into the mold, the back, uh, into the mold one last time here. And what I want to do is mark for all the bracing where it, it meets up with the side because you got to notch out the sides just a little bit so that the back will sit flat there on the side. So you just go around and wherever you, every one of those braces meet up, just make a little witness mark uh, and so you can carve it out and sand it down. Uh, just just the right amount so that the back sits flush all around the perimeter of the sides there And to start out here, what I'll do is I'll just take uh, my little dovetail saw and I'll just uh, 
make little cuts on each side of uh, you know the rabbit that there that I'm going to need to uh, carve out. Make little saw cuts on each side, and I'll just use a combination of chisels and some sandpaper to 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 make that groove so for the brace to sit in. I mean, we're we're only talking about a sixteenth of an inch uh, at the most that you gotta you gotta uh, carve out there. So it just takes a little bit a little bit of material to come out, not much. And once everything looks good, then we, uh, we go and glue the back onto the, uh, the sides. So very simply, we just spread some glue along the edge and spread it out with a little little brush make sure we have even glue spread out along uh, the kerf lining and on top of your blocks and once we, we get everything spread out uh, we, we start clamping down the top you know regular wood glue you have a pretty decent amount of open time you know maybe about five or ten minutes before it starts to skim over but you still got to work quick
So here I'm, I'm clamping it up and I'm lining everything up with this uh, couple of witness marks I made to make sure that the, uh, the back is centered there uh, on the side. And we'll just start clamping around and clamping around the perimeter and these cam clamps. They work out really well because they have a really deep throat there. But uh, as you'll see, we soon begin to run out of almost like we don't have enough clamps. Uh, and my little workbench here is almost not enough room uh, to, to have enough area to here to put all my clamps in. And uh, I use a combination of these cam clamps and uh, the quick clamps and any other clamp I can think of in the uh, in the shop to get this uh, this top in place completely around the, the perimeter there of the sides. So here it is glued up with just about every clamp I have in this shop and I'm, one, I'm just going around with my six inch rule here and, and just uh, scraping off the, any, any squeeze out that I can see. There's a bunch of squeeze out actually on the inside that I really can't get to right now because of the, all these clamps here but that's, that's alright we'll get it later. Um, but here I am with the big reveal taking off all the clamps. And I'll just want to basically take the mold apart here and be able to pull the uh, pull the guitar body out basically once and for all and hang up the mold basically for good now.
All right, guys, so we got that done. Everything looks good. I spent a little time off camera sanding uh, the inside up, cleaning up uh, any glue, squeeze out, and scraping, scraping that out, and sanding the inside of everything uh, up to 320 grit. I also, take it, check this out, I also made it official. Printed out a label, glued it on, zero number 002. Handcrafted by Brian Fleischman. Uh, printed that out on the computer, basically just took a little bit of this uh, spray adhesive, glued it on. But I like to get everything really smooth and nice looking. Bring it, bring it down to 320, get every bit of glue squeeze out uh, removed, uh, and just get it as nice looking as possible. I know you don't really see it, but you know, you read that it helps with the uh, the sound of the guitar, having it as smooth as possible, and not having glue squeeze out, and things like that. And plus, it just looks real nice. So I'm really happy. I think it's turning out pretty great, and uh, I'm really looking forward to the next step, which will be working on the neck, uh, getting the neck uh, blank glued up, and starting to lay out for the for the nut certs, because this will be a bolt-on neck this time. And uh, all right, as always, like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you all next time.